So hi guys, nakakit na po kami dito sa cross na to guys, yun dito kami sa pinakamataas sa top kami Hala. yun guys dito kami sa malapit na malapit ng palos yan tingnan natin sila guys yung kasama nating umakyat Kami namin Ang haba ng pila Una kaming makyat So yun, dito na kami Tapos ikot muna tayo dito guys Dito tayo Ikot ko kayo dito sa Kain lang fair O tinatawag na yun siguro ito tayo low tide to ngayon guys kasi yun kita nyo yung poste nyo nakita ang kita yun yun Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome aboard. Uh, who here is not from Seattle? Excellent, then I'm not alone. You might hear in my voice, especially if I talk about a boat, uh, that I'm from Minnesota. So anyone else from Minnesota? Anyone from the Midwest? Yeah. All right, y'all are my people over here. All right, well, welcome aboard. As we get started, uh, I'm gonna just direct you to a couple nautical terms. As you're facing the front of the boat, if you look on the left side, that's called the port side. You can remember that because port and left both have four letters. <coughs> on the right side of the boat, that's called the starboard side because of course they couldn't make it easy to remember, but the right side of the boat is the starboard side. So I'm gonna direct you first to the starboard side and you can see over here this blue uh, and kind of neon green building. This is a fantastic part of Seattle. It is the Seattle Aquarium. Now the Seattle Aquarium, is wonderful because they're not about all the shows like SeaWorld or anything like that. It's about education, rehabilitation. They want to make sure that people get the opportunity to see all of the animals and the aquatic life in its natural habitat. So there's not really uh, all those shows. However, there's one uh, resident of the Seattle Aquarium that does do one trick. So as we get around here, you'll see kind of this glassy area in the middle, and in there resides Mishka the sea otter. And Mishka, in 2015, actually got asthma from the wildfires that were around. And so what they taught Mishka to do is to spin full thing. You can see the wooden piece up there. That's a new ocean aquarium attraction that's coming. Now, just to the left of that, if you can see those uh, red umbrellas up there, 
that is the back side of Pike Place Market. Now, if you Googled Seattle, uh, you likely would see a video of somebody chucking fish across and somebody catching it. That is Pike Place Market. However, one of the beautiful things about Pike Place Market is that it is not a tourist trap. A lot of those places that you see, you're like, oh, okay, they're just kind of getting us all in to try to get our money. But that actually, locals use it. You can buy fresh flowers there straight out of the field. There is one attraction there that I think honestly is kind of gross, but if that's your thing, go for it. It is called the gum wall. And it is exactly what you would think it is. It is a wall with gum stuck to it. Now the story goes that in the 1990s, theater goers, before they went in, didn't want to bring their gum inside to the theater, so they just went and stuck it on the wall. And if you ever saw a picture of it, you might go, that is a ton of gum. And you would be correct, because in 2015, they actually cleaned all the gum off, and it was about 2,300 pounds of gum. That's disgusting. <laughs> but if that's your thing and you got some chewing gum, feel free to visit the gum wall and add your uh, contribution to the gum wall. There are about uh, 150 pieces of gum per brick. So just to gross you out, there you go. Now as we continue, you can see we have a cruise ship here in our port. This is a Norwegian uh, cruise line. It is the Norwegian Sun. This boat is just under a thousand feet long, 948 I believe, and it can house just under 2,000 passengers. Wow. Seattle is a thriving seaport, especially uh, in our cruise industry. All of these boats really go one place and that is Alaska. So you'll see uh, cruise ships here and then later on in the cruise you'll get some more. Uh, one of the beautiful things, actually one of the cool things you can see right now, we don't always get this, but you guys can see this black barge and the tugboat butted right up to it. That's how they refuel the boat. Later on uh, you'll see the fuel terminal down on the south end, uh, but they pretty much tug, fill that barge with fuel, drag it over here, butt it up, and then that's how they refuel those massive boats because they finished the hotel two weeks after the end of the fair. So they were kind of in a pickle and they're like, well, how do we recoup our costs? Now, I'm not saying any of you would do this, but have any of you been in a situation where somebody has an idea that sounds great on paper and is really terrible once you actually put it in practice? That happened at the Edgewater Hotel because they had the bright idea that you could fish from your room which sounds great unless you're on first floor and the guy at, on second floor is fishing at 4.30 in the morning and you just get a big whap of a fish on your window. Also, I don't know what you're gonna do with the fish once it gets into your room. People couldn't figure that out either. Some even tried to fill the bathtub with table salt and water and I gotta tell you, the only thing that'll get you is dead salty fish. So, uh, not great. However, their fortune did turn around in 1964 when a certain band from England came over called the Beatles. They stayed in suite 272 uh, after they left. Obviously, it was great because you could only get one way in and one way out, so it helped security. But after the Beatles left, that entire suite was pretty much torn apart down to the carpet to help make souvenirs and people sold off little chunks and trinkets and everything that they could from the Edgewater Hotel in the Beatles suite. After the Beatles left, a lot of other rock and roll uh, bands stayed there. Continuing on, you'll see Pier 70 right here, this gray and kind of maroon building. Uh, during Prohibition, the uh, Liquor Control Board had their warehouse here. And so, uh, Prohibition, as many of you know, did not exactly go well for uh, those attempting Prohibition. And you can especially tell that because now it hosts an Irish pub in, in there. So, uh, as we pass Pier 70, I'm just going to tell you there's a great picture opportunity. This is going to be the closest that we get 
to the Space Needle in the unobstructed view. So feel free to get up, uh, get your pictures of that. But just beneath that, you can see a kind of uh, yellow and then green grass space. This is the Olympic Sculpture Garden. Uh, it, the grass itself, the yellow and the grass, is meant to represent the two sides of Washington State. Now, uh, back there, if you look a little bit back toward Pier 70, you can see a giant head back there. That is 45 feet tall. It's called Echo, named uh, from Greek mythology. And then you can see this orange sculpture up there. Can anyone, I'll tell you, it's an animal. It's supposed to be an animal. Can anyone tell me what kind of animal it is? Most often we get a whale, or orca, something like that. It's actually called eagle. So that's supposed to be an eagle. One of the funny things I think about the Olympic Sculpture Garden uh, is they're very conscious of how to maintain the artwork. And there's a lot of red and white towers on it. That is Queen, the Queen Anne neighborhood. Now that houses two famous TV doctors. Can any, anyone have a guess who they are? Meredith Grey? Anyone else? From the 1990s, really. Dr. Fraser Crane. Now, Meredith Gray's house uh, is actually a real house up there, but it is a private residence, so you can go see it, but you know, probably don't go knock on the door because somebody actually lives there. Now, if you watched Frazier, Frazier lived in a high-rise apartment called the Elliott Bay Towers. Those are actually non-existent. If you'll notice up there, there's no high-rise uh, buildings up there, but if you remember in that show, there was this beautiful view out of the window. And that actually is from Queen Anne Hill. It's from a park up there called Cary Park. So if you want to go get that panoramic, beautiful view of Seattle, Queen Anne is where you want to go and you want to go to Cary Park. Just know that you're going to run into a ton of other photographers because that's the big spot to be. Now down here, you'll notice some of the grass. This is uh, one of our lovely parks that we have, uh, Myrtle Edwards Park. Now Myrtle was a city councilman for Seattle uh, and she took it upon herself in the 50s and early 60s to start buying up little chunks of land because she knew the importance of green space within a city. And so through her efforts, the ideal came to pass that when you step out your of these corn silos back there, uh, and then on a dry day, they will load these ships full of them. Uh, they can't load on a wet day because you have to keep uh, that corn product very dry, otherwise it starts to ferment and that can lead to drunken cows. And nobody wants that. So, uh, one fun fact about uh, these silos back here, they are owned by the Port of Seattle, but they are operated by the Louis Dreyfus Company. Now that might ring a bell, that name might ring a bell. Uh, they are the family of famous actress Julia, Julia Louis-Dreyfus. And so they uh, are the ones that operate this port. Now, one more thing before I turn the mic back over to Jackson. Uh, you'll notice just past it, there's a double helix shaped uh, bridge back there. It's the white thing that's kind of coming into view right now. Uh, double helix is the shape of human DNA and that's because that that white and gray building and the bridge uh, was in, originally built for Amgen, uh, the largest biotech company in the world. However, they sold that, com or that building off to Expedia.com and the thing is that they sold it off uh, and Expedia took hold of it in March of 2020. So they opened the building in March of 2020 for a grand total of one day and then they had to shut it down for COVID and send everyone to work at home. But now luckily they are back up and running at full strength. You can see some of the great green space out front. Uh, they realized through this that Sometimes people work best not stuck in a cubicle. Imagine that. Uh, and so in this green space out front, it is said that they have disguised Wi-Fi routers as rocks. And so the employees can go outside, get some fresh air, be in the green space, look at all this beautiful view, uh, and get, still get their work done. 
with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jackson so uh, I can get a drink of water and he will take you the rest of the way. Uh, that is cold storage for Washington exports. And while that could be anything from Washington apples to cherries, primarily what's stored in there is a fish called wild Alaskan pollock, a big fish that's commercially fished up in Alaska. Now there's not really a big commercial fishing scene in the waters surrounding Seattle, the waterways around here, uh, but a lot of the fish that comes in from Alaska has to be uh, distributed from Seattle, right at kind of this the bottleneck here. Uh, but Alaskan pollock, you probably had it before, if you eat seafood, it's in things like McDonald's fish fillet sandwiches, uh, fish sticks, imitation crabby, you might find them like a sushi roll, a California roll, basically any mystery white fish where they make a point not to mention what it is, there's a good chance it's wild Alaskan pollock there. Uh, but you can see we've got a couple cruise ships in port over at uh, Pier 91 there, the one with the gray warehouse. And now the one on the right, the Ovation of the Seas, that one is the larger of the two, it's about 1100 feet long. Celebrity Edge is a little shorter, shorter than 1,000 feet. Uh, but it's a neat operation that we have here in Seattle, I would say. Right, we saw the Norwegian Sun a little bit earlier. We see these two cruise ships. Uh, all of these ships will be gone by about 4 or 5 p.m. tonight. So it really is a turn and burn operation when it comes to a cruise ships staying in Seattle. They'll get in about 4 or 5 in the morning. They'll offload all their passengers that morning, clean the whole entire boat from top to bottom, load the new set of passengers on, and then they'll depart, like I said, by about 4 or 5 p.m. So a very efficient operation, I would say. But we are the origin for a lot of the Alaskan cruises that go on during the summertime from about mid-April up until about mid-October. Uh, but way off in the distance... So guys, so we got na po tayo, yeah. Dahil talaga kami sa Rabitati kanina, umikot na po, at pabalik na po tayo doon. So, napakaganda talaga yan.
destroyer. Keep, keep that ship in your mind because USS Samson is over on the south end of the bay as well. We'll see that later. That's the same style of ship, but that one's actually pretty good. Yeah. So this is the Island Island South Harbor guys. Oh, I want to find 
Next, uh, uh, next trip nila guys. You know. I think this is the third one of the day. This continual love and love we have to all our places. It's some really gorgeous views out on the water. So, yun guys. Oh. Ha. Dito na kami. Saan sila si mama? Malayo pa sila. Ano nito na pala sila. Yan. Ito na iba yun. So enjoy talaga pag pumasok. Sumakay ka diyan guys. Thank you.